equinox. An equinox is commonly regarded as the instant of time when the plane, extended indefinitely in all directions, of Earth's equator passes through the center of the Sun. This occurs twice each year, around 21st of March and 22 to 23 September. In other words, it is the moment at which the center of the visible Sun is directly above the equator. In the Northern Hemisphere, the equinox in March is called the vernal or spring equinox, the September equinox is called the autumnal or fall equinox. However, because the Moon, and to a lesser extent the other planets, cause the motion of the Earth to vary from a perfect ellipse, the equinox is now officially defined by the Sun's more regular ecliptic longitude rather than by its declination. The instants of the equinoxes are currently defined to be when the longitude of the Sun is 0 degrees and 180 degrees. There are tiny, up to 1 in 1 quarter arc second, variations in the Sun's latitude, discussed below, which means the Sun's center is rarely precisely over the equator under the official definition. The two understandings of the equinox can lead to discrepancies of up to 69 seconds. On the day of an equinox, daytime and nighttime are of approximately equal duration all over the planet. They are not exactly equal, however, due to the angular size of the Sun, atmospheric refraction, and the rapidly changing duration of the length of day that occurs at most latitudes around the equinoxes. The word is derived from the Latin comma from, equal, and, genitive comma night. The equinoxes are the only times when the solar terminator, the edge between night and day, is perpendicular to the equator. As a result, the northern and southern hemispheres are equally illuminated. The word comes from Latin ecus, meaning equal, and nox, meaning night. In other words, the equinoxes are the only times when the subsolar point is on the equator, meaning that the sun is exactly overhead at a point on the equatorial and the subsolar point crosses the equator moving northward at the March equinox and southward at the September equinox. The equinoxes, along with solstices, are directly related to the seasons of the year. In the northern hemisphere, the vernal equinox, March, conventionally marks the beginning of spring in most cultures and is considered the start of the new year in Hindu calendar and the Persian calendar or Iranian calendars as Noruz, means new day, while the autumnal equinox, September, marks the beginning of autumn. When Julius Caesar established the Julian calendar in 45 BC, he set 25th of March as the date of the spring equinox, this was already the starting day of the year in the Persian and Indian calendars. Because the Julian year is longer than the tropical year by about 11.3 minutes on average, or one day in 128 years, the calendar drifted with respect to the two equinoxes, so that in AD 300 the spring equinox occurred on about 21st of March, and by AD 1500 it had drifted backwards to 11th of March. This drift induced Pope Gregory XIII to create the modern Gregorian calendar. The Pope wanted to continue to conform with the edicts of the Council of Nicaea in AD 325 concerning the date of Easter, which means he wanted to move the vernal equinox to the date on which it fell at that time, 21st of March is the day allocated to it in the Easter table of the Julian calendar, and to maintain it at around that date in the future, which he achieved by reducing the number of leap years from 100 to 97 every 400 years. However, there remained a small residual variation in the date and time of the vernal equinox of about plus or minus 27 hours from its mean position, virtually all because the distribution of 24-hour centurial leap days causes large jumps, c. This in turn raised the possibility that it could fall on 22 March, and thus Easter Day might theoretically commence before the equinox. The astronomers chose the appropriate number of days to omit so that the equinox would swing from 19 to 21 March but never fall on 22nd of March, within Europe. Day is usually defined as the period when sunlight reaches the ground in the absence of local obstacles. On the day of the equinox, the center of the sun spends a roughly equal amount of time above and below the horizon at every location on the Earth, so night and day are about the same length. Sunrise and sunset can be defined in several ways. But a widespread definition is the time that the top limb of the sun is level with the horizon. With this definition, the day is longer than the night at the equinoxes. In sunrise slash sunset tables, the assumed semi diameter, apparent radius, of the sun is 16 arc minutes and the atmospheric refraction is assumed to be 34 arc minutes. Their combination means that when the upper limb of the sun is on the visible horizon, its center is 50 arc minutes below the geometric horizon which is the intersection with the celestial sphere of a horizontal plane through the eye of the observer.
Equator. These effects make the day about 14 minutes longer than the night at the equator and longer still towards the poles. The real quality of day and night only happens in places far enough from the equator to have a seasonal difference in day length of at least 7 minutes, actually occurring a few days towards the winter side of each equinox. The times of sunset and sunrise vary with the observer's location, longitude and latitude, so the dates when day and night are equal also depend upon the observer's location. A third correction for the visual observation of a sunrise, or sunset, is the angle between the apparent horizon as seen by an observer and the geometric, or sensible, horizon. This is known as the dip of the horizon and varies from 3 arc minutes for a viewer standing on the seashore to 160 arc minutes for a mountaineer on Everest. The effect of a larger dip on taller objects, reaching over 2.5 degrees of arc on Everest, accounts for the phenomenon of snow on a mountain peak turning gold in the sunlight long before the lower slopes are illuminated. The date on which the day and night are exactly the same is known as an equilux. The neologism, believed to have been coined in the 1980s, achieved more widespread recognition in the 21st century. Prior to this, the word equilux was more commonly used as a synonym for isophit, and there was no generally accepted term for the phenomenon. At the most precise measurements, there is no such thing as an equilux, because the lengths of day and night change more rapidly than any other time of the year around the equinoxes. In the mid latitudes, daylight increases or decreases by about three minutes per day at the equinoxes, and thus adjacent days and nights only reach within one minute of each other. The date of the closest approximation of the equilux varies slightly by latitude. In the mid-latitudes, it occurs a few days before the spring equinox and after the fall equinox in each respective hemisphere. In the half-year centered on the June solstice, the sun rises north of east and sets north of west, which means longer days with shorter nights for the northern hemisphere and shorter days with longer nights for the southern hemisphere. In the half-year centered on the December solstice, the sun rises south of east and sets south of west and the durations of day and night are reversed. Also on the day of an equinox, the sun rises everywhere on Earth, except at the poles, at about 6 o'clock and sets at about 1800 hours, local solar time. These times are not exact for several reasons. Some of the statements above can be made clearer by picturing the day arc, i.e., the path along which the sun appears to move across the sky. The pictures show this for every hour on equinox day. In addition, some ghost suns are also indicated below the horizon, up to 18 degrees below it. The sun in Susharia still causes twilight. The depictions presented below can be used for both the northern and the southern hemispheres. The observer is understood to be sitting near the tree on the island depicted in the middle of the ocean. The green arrows give cardinal directions. The following special cases are depicted. The March equinox occurs about when the sun appears to cross the celestial equator northward. In the northern hemisphere, the term vernal point is used for the time of this occurrence and for the precise direction in space where the sun exists at that time. This point is the origin of some celestial coordinate systems, which are usually rooted to an astronomical epoch since it gradually varies, precesses, over time. Strictly speaking, at the equinox, the sun's ecliptic longitude is zero. Its latitude will not be exactly zero. Since Earth is not exactly in the plane of the ecliptic dot its declination will not be exactly zero either. The ecliptic is defined by the very center of Earth and the Moon combined. The modern definition of equinox is the instance when the Sun's apparent geocentric longitude is zero degrees, northward equinox, or 180 degrees, southward equinox. See the adjacent diagram. Because of the precession of the Earth's axis, the position of the vernal point on the celestial sphere changes over time, and the equatorial and the ecliptic coordinate systems change accordingly. Thus when specifying celestial coordinates for an object, one has to specify at what time the vernal point in the celestial equator are taken. That reference time is called the equinox of date. The autumnal equinox is at ecliptic longitude 180 degrees and at right ascension 12 hours. The upper culmination of the vernal point is considered the start of the sidereal day for the observer. The hour angle of the vernal point is, by definition, the observer's sidereal time. Using the current official Yao constellation boundaries, and taking into account the variable precession speed and the rotation of the celestial equator, the equinoxes shift through the constellations as follows, expressed in astronomical year numbering when the year 0 equals 1 BC, minus 1 equals 2 BC, etc. The equinoxes are sometimes regarded as the start of spring and autumn. A number of traditional harvest festivals are celebrated on the date of the equinoxes. 
Earth's observations of the equinox are frequently used in online debates between flat Earth conspiracy proponents and those who support the generally accepted heliocentric globe model. Wolfie6020, a well known flat Earth debunker on YouTube, has a semi annual equinox challenge with prizes available to any flat earther who can show a functioning flat earth model that can match observations on the equinox. No flat earther has succeeded in winning the prize. Modern flat earth proponents typically cite an azimuthal equidistant projection map to explain the daily and annual motions of the Sun and Moon, each along a sort of circular path around the North Pole, oscillating between the tropics throughout the year. However, Proponents of the globe model point out that worldwide observations of the azimuths of the equinox sunrise and sunset, at around 90 degrees east and 270 degrees west, respectively, match the globe model, but cannot be reconciled with a localized overhead sun above a flat plane. One effect of equinoctial periods is the temporary disruption of communications satellites. For all geostationary satellites, there are a few days around the equinox when the sun goes directly behind the satellite relative to Earth i.e. within the beam width of the ground station antenna, for a short period each day. The sun's immense power and broad radiation spectrum overload the Earth station's reception circuits with noise and, depending on antenna size and other factors, temporarily disrupt or degrade the circuit. The duration of those effects varies but can range from a few minutes to an hour. For a given frequency band, a larger antenna has a narrower beam width and hence experiences shorter duration sun outage windows. Equinoxes occur on any planet with a tilted rotational axis. A dramatic example is Saturn, where the equinox places its ring system edge on facing the sun. As a result, they are visible only as a thin line when seen from Earth. When seen from above, a view seen during an equinox for the first time from the Cassini space probe in 2009, they receive very little sunshine, indeed, more planet shine than light from the sun. This phenomenon occurs once every 14.7 years on average and can last a few weeks before and after the exact equinox. Saturn's most recent equinox was on August 11, 2009, and its next will take place on May 6, 2025. Mars's most recent equinox was on May 22, 2018, Northern Autumn, and the next will be on March 23, 2019, Northern Spring. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.